I'm Christopher Moulet. And I'm Emily Mee, and today we're here to Hey, Charlie. High School Musical is the Disney Channel phenomenon. It was originally made to just be a special on the cable station. The hugeness of it prompted them to put two sequels into the works. The first one to be shown on the station and the second one to hit theaters. High School Musical 3 is the one in theaters where we find the Wildcats are... All in this together. Once again. High School Musical starts with a jock and a science whiz who turn out they can sing together so they're going to break out of their social demands and join the musical. Though the people in the athletic department, the science department, and the theater department all want to stop it. In the sequel, It's Summer Vacation, Troy is starting to stick with the Wildcats but being pulled away by the lure of money, basketball, college, and Sharpe Evans is trying to claim Troy for her own. Now, we find it's senior year. Gabriella may have an opportunity to leave high school early and go to Stanford, and Troy is wrestling at his now confused destiny. Will he be a basketball star or will he continue with the theater? Meanwhile, the final high school musical is being put on. The theme, senior year. The Wildcats are going to put together a musical chronicling their final year at school while two representatives of Juilliard will be in the audience picking which one will get the scholarship. So how was it? It wasn't as good as High School Musical 2, but I'm slightly biased because that happens to be my favorite High School Musical. Oh. But it is classic High School Musical. You have your Troy, Gabriella, love each other, doe-eye scenes, and they sing to each other. And it's so sweet. In the tree. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely silly. Uh, but you have the fun songs and dance sequences. And of course, the Sharpay and Ryan Evans, you know, big Broadway kind of look at me song, um, which I didn't like quite as much as Fabulous. And we were in, you know, the movie theater full of little girls, absolutely the most thrilling time of their life. Um, giggles, and my daughter would just keep turning around and go, <laughs> you know, at different parts, and of course, covering her eyes when they would kiss because she thinks that's gross still. <laughs> but dreaming about becoming Gabriella and meeting a boy like Troy. So it, there's not a ton to say about it. It doesn't have the most depth. <laughs> but I don't think it's supposed to. No. It's a sicky sweet bubblegum pop musical. Okay, there's two parts to High School Musical. Obviously there's the music and there's the story. It is for little kids. It's a little dopey. I'll just say the first one, I was in physical pain listening to the music. It's boy band pop. It's horrible. The second one, High School Musical 2, they knew they had the audience. So they could do whatever they wanted. Like, it could have been people with kazoos. It would still sell. They started mixing it, particularly the song I Don't Dance starts to mix with swing music. I really like that. High School Musical 3, they're back to just simple boy band pop music. It's better this time, and there's two songs that actually have industrial music in the background, similar to Skillet or Mortal, but then they sing like the Backstreet Boys and kind of kill it for me. I don't have a lot of knowledge of musicals, but they are delving back to classic musicals. There's one scene where Zach is in a hallway, and the hallway starts spinning, just like Fred Astaire in the room that spun, and it's a great dance sequence. There's another scene with Sharpay that's totally modeled after Marilyn Monroe going down the stairs with the men in tuxedos. There's a lot of really great references to classic musicals. I wish they did that with the music as well because the music drove me nuts. I was really entertained when they sang because of the theatrics and just the movie making steps up when they start singing in the third movie. As far as the plot line, Rip my guts out, it's so obnoxious. Like, that's... Oh, it's awful. Guess now it's official. Can't back out, can't back out. No! Is it good for kids? I think so. It's... Is it fine for kids? Sure. Is it fun for kids? Absolutely. Do I think it should be the exception to the rule? Yes. I think because there are things that you have to choose to ignore, you have to choose to ignore that there are high school students, not eight-year-old kids. They don't make it so bad that you can't watch the movie, but like I said, exception to the rule, 
particularly in my opinion, because of how commercialized it is. And the one other thing, and this may sound silly, if it was a movie for teenagers, I wouldn't notice it, because it's not that bad, but it's not. It's a movie for little kids, so it bothers me. I think their shirts are too low cut. And I think, why? Yeah. They go through so much effort to make everything else so pure. And then Gabrielle has cleavage? That why the one thing I used to say about this series was that the first movie was terrible, but there's nothing wrong with it. The second movie, it's summer. We now have bathing suits, and Sharpay is dressed in a little more Christina Aguilera, and her dancing is a little more like that. This one, but you know why I could take that a little bit because she's kind of perceived right. as oh, a yeah. bad girl. Because Gabriella wasn't. Gabriella right. was in the lifeguard bathing suit, totally covered. Yes. But they were edging that way in the second one. In this one, well, let's start with Sharpay. She is not only wearing low-cut stuff the whole time. Her skirt does not really show off her butt, even though it's short. But they show us a bunch of high school boys staring at her and then a close-up on her butt to tell us all the high school boys are checking her out sexually. And then, yes, Gabriella is not only wearing low-cut shirt, her skirts all come just as high as they possibly can. Yeah, I didn't notice the length as much. I mean, it's there, but I didn't notice it as much. I noticed more the low cut top. Again, it's not enough to make me say, oh, bad movie. It just makes me think, why? And the other issue you have is, yes, her skirt isn't so short that you can see her butt. Yeah. However, kids watch that movie, they want those clothes, and now they're in short skirts that do show their butt because they don't have editing. The dance scene on the roof. I'm positive they had to do multiple takes to make sure we don't see her underwear. Yeah. Enchanted, she has a low cut outfit. Yeah, no one reacts it. to it and they never shoot it so we can tell it's low cut. And she's also dressed like princesses and fairies right. and that's what they dress like. Where this one, not only are there moments where we can tell, we get characters gawking over yeah. them. Essentially little kids are taught at this point girls dress like that so guys can gawk at them and that's all good. The other reason that I choose this as my sort of exception to the rule is because of the music. It's nice to see kids get excited about a musical. I know what you're yes. saying. It's not the highest quality music in the world, but it is nice to get your kids, see your kids excited about a musical because I think you can use High School Musical as um, an inroad to things like Sound of Music, My Fair Lady, because now they're in the habit of watching something that breaks off into song all the time. Yes. And so you can get them into something that's deeper. Yeah. Uh, I just loved My Fair Lady. I love Sound of Music. And so make those the things you watch more often and watch High School Musical once in a while. I do like the fact that it's introduced us back to this genre, which admittedly I'm not well versed in, but I, of course, would want to use it as an inroad to the sound of music, Godspell. That's what I, yeah, Godspell. Godspell, I think, would Jesus fit Christ really Superstar. well. I would oh, say God. not that one. I knew you would. Now, I, I say sound of music, Godspell, and then when they're a little older, Danielson, a family movie. If you'd like a complete breakdown of what's on the screen, check screenit.com. What about spiritual issues? Spiritual issues at the beginning are very minor. Gabriella mentions that she used to sing in church, but nothing comes out of that. In the first one, there's also a reference to evolution as something that Gabriella should accept, but they're very minor. In the second one, we start getting songs about needing to do what's right for me and following my own heart. But by the third one, it's all about, I need to figure out what's right for me and what feels right. This has anthems about following your own heart. And I think that's a dangerous message. What's our recommendation? Uh, see ya. Don't. Yeah, I'm gonna say the first one, I can see some redeeming value. After that, the quality goes up, but the messages get worse. And I'd say no after High School Musical 1. Thanks for watching. On YouTube, please click subscribe. On our blog, please click the RSS feed. When you saw Fred Astaire, and I was like, not quite as cool as Kevin Bacon in Footloose, but I see where you're going. It's like Kevin Bacon for five-year-olds. I haven't seen Footloose. I will before the new one. There's a new Footloose? Zach Efron's gonna be yes, Kevin Bacon? Yes, oh, my um, Kenny Ortega, who directed all three high school musicals, is directing Footloose.
Though the guy writing it, the only other thing he wrote was The Seventh Sense, where it helps men who are gay but don't know it find out that they're gay. <laughs>